Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Adrian or Tag Animations and let's get straight into this. This is not your normal tutorial. First of all, this is an introduction to my plugins. Um, so it's a plugin pack of three tools. Um, if I go down here to my testing objects, you'll see that we have block map, light map, and plant map. And uh, the whole, it's gonna be called remap. The, the whole uh, plugin pack is gonna be called remap. And basically the objective of remap is to remap your 3D objects onto 2D objects. So plant map does uh, your 3D plants to 2D plants. Block map does your 3D blocks to 2D blocks. And uh, light map put adds lights to whatever object you need it to go to. So let's get into this really quick. Uh, I do want to tell you guys how I kind of started doing this and how I started developing. Uh, basically, it's been an effort of two to three months uh, working on this plugin uh, or this plugin pack actually and trying to research things. I've talked to people like Weed Lion and throughout the Cinema 4D um, community and it's been really rough. Um, it's it's hard to make your own plugin or even make something close to a plugin. Uh, even though these aren't actual plugins that you go up here and you know go up here and do stuff. Uh, I made them easier so that way you can just easily drag and drop them in and uh, and do it that way. So I like it like that. Uh, another thing to note is you can tell that there's just these two. You can't really do anything with them. You can't uh, look inside of them. So it kind of helps with my workflow so that way people can't uh, steal anything or take anything from it. It's just there. There's no layers to it or anything. So it's, it's, it's just to help with privacy. Um, I've known people who, you know, use things that aren't theirs and stuff like that and uh, it really does suck when somebody does steal something that uh, you know you've worked a long, a hard time on or, uh, um, you know, you put a lot of effort into. So that's just for privacy and, and helping me know that my stuff is safe um, along with copyright and stuff that I have for this. Um, okay, so let's get into this. So when you drag and drop plant map in so you just drag and drop it in um, and it's going to look something like this and you get a little palette of stuff and we're going to get into that stuff so the only thing you'll need uh, in this I'm going to put this right back here the only thing you're going to need is you're going to need your imported map so this is that and you're going to need your uh, whatever plant you're trying to replace so in my case let's try to replace this 2D tall grass with this 3D tall grass. Now the 3D tall grass um, can be found in you know any of your normal nowadays uh, plug-in or not plug-in packs, model packs. So for instance this is BY this is BYK's pack and uh, if you go into plants you can see that we have tall grass right here and it's all 3D along with everything else is 3D. Uh, you can also go in Weed Lines Pack, which is right here, and uh, you can go to Natural, and there's grass and stuff here too. So, whichever pack or whatever model you're trying to do, uh, that's how to get that model. So, let's get right into it. So, with uh, Plant Map, what you're going to have to do is you're going to need a 3D object in your Maps Plant Object. So. Uh, this would be your maps plant object and this would be your 3d object and pretty much you just drag them straight in so we're dragging the map thing and you can tell there's little dots yeah, it might be hard to see but there are little dots um, where your uh, grass is and that means it's pretty much working and then you add in your 3d grass and bam it's as easy as that and uh, so if we turn off the map you'll be able to see that for some reason it's not exactly mapping everything that's there and uh, the reason for that is basically I have this handy thing uh, called layers um, so if you want less grass than you actually have so if we just turn that off 
Um, if we want less grass than there actually is, then this would be a good way to do that. Kind of um, help with, you know, just having less less grass but since it's 3d grass it kind of looks a little bit more full I don't really know how to explain it uh, other than that and uh, this also used for lag purposes uh, and stuff so uh, yeah so you can pretty much just on all the layers and you'll get the full detail of all your grass um, and everything's completely lag free uh, I made this I made these plugins so that way they benefit most people with slow com PCs all the way up to like a high-end PC like what I have so um, yeah yeah so this should be lag free and if not you can just use layers to hide certain sections so it's not totally uh, everything's all laggy and stuff so so we've gone over the layers we've gone in how to uh, add in your 3d objects um, and remap all your grass and uh, we can now go into maybe the positioning, the random po positioning we have. Um, so we have just random position. You can uh, mess with that. So this is what I mean when you can get more dense grass. You can get, you know, anything that's uh, a little bit different from what your uh, normal flow was. So you have your normal grass and then you have just whatever you want. So you can really randomize everything that you that you have and what you're, you know, what you're doing. So it doesn't have to be exactly like, you know, the original. You can actually make it a little bit different uh, with your random randomness. Um, another thing you can do. Let me turn off this again. Uh, another thing you can do is rotation. I'm not gonna go over scale because it basically, I mean, you just make larger grass. That's pretty much it. So I put this in just I put in certain features just just in case somebody wanted to use them but even though they they might not have that much of a use uh, like the scaling. Um, we also have random rotation which is uh, basically you can oh I turned it off sorry basically you can turn these around and this this I really like a lot because instead of having just the straight pattern of grass you can actually randomize it. To for the rotation so that way everything doesn't look exactly the same and uh, to me that, that that's everything having everything to be more individualized and random and stuff um, you can also do some other rotation stuff but I wouldn't I wouldn't even bother with that that's stupid um, by the way another cool thing about having this grass rather than uh, using like uh, the 2D grass or whatever is that you don't have to, if you ever go to render settings and go to options, if you've ever noticed that you've had like black spots um, in your grass as further you go out, you don't really have to worry about that with this because with 3D grass, that's not using transparency as, as much as you know the 2D version is. Uh, if we go back into the 2D version, you can, uh, we're gonna off this for a second. You can see that this is almost all transparency, which means you would have to turn this, the ray depth, up so much to compensate for that um, transparency that it adds on to your render times. With, um, with the plugin using 3D grass, you don't really have to worry about that because it's not fully using, these are actual blocks they're not really using transparency like that so um, I think it helps a lot with with that too um, so yeah so that's that um, and you just have your rotation settings and stuff like that for randomness and one of the last things I want to cover is animation now before I press play and show you that it can be animated um, I want to go over the fact that maybe you guys are skeptical about how this would be uh, animated at such a large scale and uh, I just want to tell you that uh, it's possible you just off this and press play and everything's animated you don't have to worry about um, placing in blocks that are automatically animated so uh, for instance if you go to I think this one grass wind uh, this is animated using cloth uh, I'm pretty sure it's cloth actually and uh, so yeah, at least I think this is using uh, 
cloth, but um, this doesn't have to use cloth. Um, you don't have to worry about all the animation slowing down your render times or worry about it, um, you know, having major lag in your viewport because this is seamless. Even though I have a high PC, this is still running smooth. So, um, animation goes like this, and uh, this is just the default. And so when I turn off the animation strength and I turn it down, you can see that kind of uh, lessens the amount of, uh, of animation there is. And you can see that it goes to everything. It's very subtle too, very, very subtle. You can also mess with the amplitude. This is basically how much waviness there is. Um, I don't really know how to explain it besides that. It's just how far it's willing to go. So if I put this to a value like 30, then you can see that it waves a lot more. Um, and if I put this to a value like uh, 15, it does it less. So that's pretty much what that does. I would keep it near five though, because you don't really want it waving too much or else it, I don't know, it just looks weird to me, but, um, but yeah, that was even at five. 100% if I put it back to 30 you'll see that it, it acts all weird I, I do not know so don't put it that high please don't put it that high um, I would put it just to something like 15 or lower even 15 is too much um, so yeah just keep it low like 5 or, or less um, you don't have to worry about all these black spots because they won't show up in render but if you do something higher than 5 uh, most likely it will be deformed and stuff so um, and in due time, I may add something like a, like something to, to maybe make this a little bit smoother so that way you don't see this so much in uh, the viewport. But as far as I know, in render, it looks, it looks fine. Um, you also have something called wind direction. Uh, this is pretty cool. So right now, it's going through back and forth like this. And uh, you can see that it just swaps the, the way uh, this wind is going. So it's going this way, then it's going that way. And uh, if we put it on Y though, you'll see that instead of going back and forth, it goes up and down, uh, which is really cool. And uh, so if you wanted something, maybe if like uh, the grass, or if this was like a new dimension or something like that, um, this would be a cool way to have your grass um, be you know, interact in a totally different way instead of just waving back and forth, it's waving up and down, which looks pretty cool. Um, and if you do Z, then that basically goes this way. So there's different ways you can have your uh, wind position, but on default, it's just going back and forth like that. Uh, then you have something called seed, which basically you won't really notice much of a change. It basically just changes the pattern in which they wave. But again, you won't really notice a difference unless you're like looking like super, super close or something. You're like, oh, that's that's different or something. You know, I don't know. Uh, so you can just either leave this at zero or change it to any value you want. Um, and then lastly, there's animation speed, which is you turn this to zero and uh, it goes pretty, pretty low at zero, it, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and it takes it, it takes a full uh, timeline in order to uh, reset. So you won't be able to see the change unless, uh, you know, it resets. So five, and then if I put it to four right now, you're not gonna see anything until it goes to zero again. So um, I put the max of this to 15 because it's super high and you won't really need to use 15 unless you're doing something like a time lapse. So this would be great if you're trying to do a time lapse on a large scale. Um, again, normally you can't do this stuff. It's, it's very sad that you can't really do this stuff without either lag or a lot of render time or trying a lot of time in general just trying to place each one of these. So this really saves up on both things, animation and um, and the time that it takes to, to do this kind of stuff manually. So that's why I really like this. This is why I created the plugin. And there's one last feature that you guys might already know just by watching this, um, or maybe you don't. So basically, 
this plugin isn't done. This plugin is is has one special feature that probably is is like the best selling point um, out of everything for this. And uh, so right now we have tall grass and it's mapped to tall grass, but that does not mean that you have to have tall grass for what is what's being mapped. So maybe you're getting at what what I'm talking about. But basically, if I wanted to, I could put a flower instead of tall grass. Uh, actually, got to do it like this. And uh, what if I wanted a flower instead of tall grass? Well, there you go. And not only that, but everything's animated. And although this is a 2D flower, uh, it works with anything. So the coolest thing you can do is, uh, I am not in BYK pack, pack, that's why. Okay, the coolest thing you can do with this is you can, if you have a plant that uses user data, you can do some really cool stuff with this. So if we pick carrot all or anything that says all in BY case pack, uh, if you have it, we can do something pretty cool. Say we wanted carrots, 3D carrots, but that's not it. That's not everything. We can have little baby plants go all the way to little medium adult plants, all the way to adult plants. And that's crazy because now people can animate um, things growing up in a large um, a large section or a large um, I don't know how to how to explain it but in a large mass of things you can have things um, kind of grow you know grow I, I don't even know how to explain it I'm I'm still pretty um, I, don't, I don't know I, I love this feature it's so cool and you can do this with, uh, I'm pretty sure this works with everything. Um, so if I want a nether wart in here, instead of uh, carrots, because maybe I hate carrots, um, that works too. And uh, same thing happens with like the layers. You can have the layers uh, different, or you should have the layers different. Right now it's not working, but. Um, so basically, if we press play it's a little bit laggy I don't know why maybe I have something in, running in the background but um, so you can have like little babies go all the way to adult plants like that and it looks it looks amazing I, I don't know how else to explain it but uh, yeah that's pretty much um, this is pretty much the uh, yeah I don't know what's going on right now it's acting a little bit funny, but uh, that's the the plant pack or the plant map plugin. Yeah, it's acting weird. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, everything will be if anything is a little bit off, I'll make sure to uh, definitely bench test it um, in the long run. Hopefully, I have everything on high. Okay, and another thing, another good thing to know is you always want to have your level of detail on high. Or else you're not going to be able to see all the all the things that are there. So in the next part of our um, little video series uh, for the, my plugins, um, we are going to go over uh, the light map plugin, and that is a really uh, I wouldn't say extensive, but it has a lot more features than what you see here with tall grass, and uh, that's what I meant to do. Okay. So see you guys in a bit and uh, I'll talk with you guys later. See ya.